this is Will Stewart from OnlineChessLessons.net, and I'm going to be looking at a classic attack in the Stonewall attack, an opening I definitely recommend for beginners to start with because it's extremely solid and uh, it, it's pretty easy to learn, you know, comparatively. So starting with d4, d5, and e3. So this is uh, kind of the start of the Stonewall. You don't really see this move in many other openings. And for this game, I'm just going to use black playing a common defense called a slob defense, uh, just as an example. So now with bishop d3, white is you know just going to go ahead and claim control of the e4 square. And also, it's important to stop black from developing that bishop to f5. So now knight d7, just some common you know example moves by black. And now it's very important for white to play f4 because black, black was actually threatening to play e5 here, which would be really bad for, for white center. So now knight d2. Another important point in the stone wall, because you, know, you can see white has got all these pawns on dark squares. So you know, there's no question white's got good control of the dark squares in the center. What he needs to do is compensate that his pawns are all on dark squares by playing with his pieces to control the white squares. So knight d2 here is critical because just for example, if knight f3, maybe black can go ahead and set up a bind you know, to counter white's play on the light squares with something like knight e4, and this is not gonna be so good for white. So it's, mu it's very important to emphasize in the opening, you wanna stop black from playing this e5 advance, and now with knight d2, you wanna stop black from establishing control of the e4 square. So with e6, this is pretty much a classic slob defense by black. And so now, white's just going to go ahead and castle. You know, nothing fancy here, nothing too crazy. Just, you know, the three rules in the opening. You want to try to establish control of the center. You want to develop your pieces actively. And you want to get your king safe. So, okay, white's done this in a pretty good hurry here. And so now with knight e5, just go ahead and hop that knight in there and start thinking about, you know, commencing aggressive operations on the king's side. So with knight d5, a lot of things are opened up for white, and we're going to see. So c5, this is a pretty common push for black in the slob defense, just trying to open up the position and gain some counterplay in the center. And here it's very important to emphasize that if white is a little bit impatient here, or maybe inaccurate is a better word, with something like queen f3, then black is going to be able to play something like c4. And why this is significant is because this bishop is not only controlling the e4 square here, it's ready to attack the black king, specifically on h7. And so with a move like c4, the bishop is going to be pushed off that diagonal into a more passive role on e2, hindering white's attacking chances. So very important here, in Stonewall, you don't want to play c3 unless you absolutely have to because this is obviously not the most aggressive move. But in this type of position, now of c4, we've got a little hole on bishop c2, and the bishop is going to maintain control of this very important b1 to h7 diagonal. So continuing, black is kind of employing a, a common, uh, it's, I believe it's called a, a blackburn zucker tort setup trying to fianchetto the bishop and further establish control of the e4 square. So here, white can go ahead and play g4, but this seems very hasty to me. I mean, why? You, you don't want to play your cards until you absolutely have to. So I, I think this is a, a more flexible continuation. It's going to be queen f3. So just you know, getting the queen a little bit closer to the black king, you know, a little bit closer to the king's side, and also... You know, this is also important, after bishop b7, e4 is already guarded. You know, this is, this is not a concern at all. e4 square, totally protected. Now we can go ahead with g4, a very committal move, but we can see white's position is uh, it's really ready to jam. You know, I mean, it, there's no question white is ready, perfectly poised to attack. So it's time to just go ahead and pull the trigger and do it. So let's just say black plays a move like a5 here. You know, a5 seems to be a, a reasonable alternative to me. Uh, also possible is, you know, queen c7 and queen e7, maybe even rook c8. Black's got a lot of options. But with a5, maybe black is trying to play a move like bishop a6 to trade off this really powerful light squared bishop. So that's kind of the positional idea behind a5. So now with g5, 
white is uh, is going guns blazing here. So if knight e4, this just doesn't really make a lot of sense. White's just going to win a pawn and have beautifully centralized pieces. So, you know, let's say black plays knight e8 here. So now white is at, you know, this is a critical moment. So, yes, white's got a, a very nice pawn chain on the dark squares. Excellent control in the center. You know, the knight on e5 is a monster. But what does it all mean? You know, a space advantage doesn't mean anything. You got to do something with it. And so here the point I'm trying to make is this is a classic sacrifice in the Stonewall attack. So when you're playing this opening, you want to keep your eyes open. You know, you, you got to stay scanning because you never know when this opportunity will present itself. So bishop takes h7, whammy. And, and this, is, this is where it just starts going crazy. And white's piece is just a flurry of activity. So if king takes, you know, really the only move to consider, now queen h5. And so we can see after rook f3 that white has a very strong attack. Yes, the bishop on c1 and the rook on a1 are out of play. But the bishop on b7 and the rook on a8 are also out of play. So there's really a material balance, more or less, on the king's side. So with rook f3, white's plan is very simple. He wants to play rook f3, wants to play rook h3, and some kind of checkmate on the h5. <laughs> so couldn't be simpler. So if black tries to uh, you know sneak it up here, let's say bishop takes e5, just rook h3. You're threatening mate. And if he tries f5, g6. You can't let the king get out of there. And after g6, there's no defense for black. So, okay, bishop takes e5, maybe not the best defense. Let's look at a move like g6. I'm going to kick the queen away, and now uh, black can start thinking about playing uh, you know, more actively to open up the center. So queen h6, you don't want to go too crazy. I know it's easy to get carried away. You sack a piece, why not sack another one? But you got to slow your roll. Knight takes g6. This is too much. This is simply too crazy. After knight g7, the knight is actually doing a good job of defending. And I, I think after rook h3, this position is simply unclear. White sack two pieces, got three pawns. Some initiative, I don't think it's enough. So let's go back. So instead of g6, just maintain the pressure. Queen h6, inching a little bit closer to the black king. And now let's say a move like knight g7, just trying to defend. Rook h3, just very clear idea. This is why I like to recommend the Stonewall for uh, beginner, beginner players, because there's very clear, very clear ideas. You know, there's no, there's no gray area. What you want to do, you want to establish control in the center. You want to lock up the center so that black is unable to, to break open in the center and, and achieve some type of counterplay, either in the center with tactics or an attack against white's own king. And you want to just play for a direct attack. So here with rook h3, couldn't be simpler. So knight h5. And uh, here, just sack the rook. You can't stop. I mean, if you do... You, you can't take one minute to, to think about going back. You've already sacked a piece. You, you're playing, you, you're going for broke here. You're playing with house money. You know, you've already sacrificed. You got to keep pushing forward. So after pawn takes, just simply g6. And uh, you, you can see white has a serious attack here. So just an example continuation, pawn takes, maybe a couple of accurate checks here by white. Just trying to line up for the right moment to capture the e6 pawn with check. It's very important. Got to keep the momentum going and con continue with the initiative. And so now after check, I think after knight takes d7, we can see white, you know, let's, okay. <laughs> you know, I sacked a bishop, and then we sacked the exchange, you know, the rook for the knight on h5. So in this position, what just happened, you know, okay, where are we? And I, I think here that white has a, a very comfortable material advantage, and it should definitely be enough to win. We've got a knight and three pawns for this rook. Not to mention black's king is kind of stuck, you know, it's, it's in shambles. The king is in shambles. So I think here we can see the classic stonewall attack, sacrifice the bishop on h7, and once you sack it, you can't look back. You got to just keep pounding away. So let's just continue, you know, rook f7, probably just knight e5 to maintain the pressure here. And I think in this position, it's quite clear after knight f3, for example, that white has got a very comfortable king. 
and uh, you know maybe the knights come to g5, whatever. I think white's got enough in this position to say the attack was successful. So this is part one of the Stonewall series for beginners. And uh, keep your eyes out for more. We're going to be producing a, a good couple parts in this series. So this is Will Stewart from OnlineChessLessons.net. And thanks for tuning in.